in national politics, the 20 candidate slate of Democrats in the running for president have taken to the airwaves the past two nights in primary debates. In tonight's Inside Look, experts from the UW-Madison Elections Research Center took to Twitter to live tweet Thursday night's debate. The crew included professors David Cannon, Barry Burden, and Mike Wagner. Journalism and mass communications professor Mike Wagner is an expert on elections and political communication. He joins us now with his take, and thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. So what was the overall take from the three of you as to winners and losers and uh, standouts. Did you have different takes? Or? We were fairly united, I think, in our views about what we thought about last night's debate, or, or the debate, you know, the second debate and the, and the first debate. Kamala Harris, I think, really had the best night of anybody across the two nights. She had a lot of airtime. She was calm, poised, direct. She went after the front runner, Joe Biden, without being mean about it, but just direct about how his policy views affected her life and the lives of people like her. And she was very strong on a variety of issues. I think she had a great night. Pete Buttigieg uh, also in the second debate, I think had a fairly strong showing. In night one, Elizabeth Warren did no harm, which was her goal as the front runner in, in that first uh, set, set of debates. Cory Booker did well for himself. I think Senator Gillibrand uh, did well for herself, as well as um, Julian Castro in that first debate. So those are the folks I think who are getting the good spin out of uh, what's happened so far. Were any of those uh, surprises to you? Well, I think Gillibrand, we thought maybe she would do better out of the gate than she had in terms of her polling. It had been not so great. And, you know, she kind of famously had her roommate from college, Connie Britton, the actress on, you know, social media, trying to get people to give donations so she could qualify for that first debate, um, which she did. And, and I think she took that opportunity and said, this is a chance to get noticed in a group of 20. And, yeah. and I think it was surprising for her, or for, for me to see her be that aggressive and, and do so successfully. Did the pointedness against Joe Biden end up feeling or looking like, you know, what people call a circular firing squad at all? I don't think so. And I think part of it was Biden's reaction. He kind of lurched around. He kind of almost yelled a little bit at, at Kamala Harris. He um, didn't have a great response when, when Swalwell went after him on another issue. And so he seemed that he wasn't so prepared. His staff was willing to leak to reporters that he hadn't prepared very much and wasn't taking their advice. And so I think Biden came out looking a little worse, which is typical for a front runner, whether it's in a primary or a general, they often stumble in the first debate. At about 9.30, um, you tweeted, here in the election center bunker, we were fans of the Chuck Todd question about prioritizing as president, a question that asked candidates to reveal whether they understand how politics works and what their major focus would be. Uh, what were you talking about there? So Chuck Todd asked, um, a question saying, you know, Barack Obama had to focus on health care and really put all of his eggs in that basket in the early part of his first term, knowing that that's where he had to hold Democrats to get something major done. What would be your thing if you had to pick just one? What would be the first thing you did? And that suggests you have to understand as president how legislating works, how you can only get so many things done at a time, and usually it's one big thing, and usually it's early in your term if that's going to happen. And so, Getting folks to think about, here's how I would prioritize as president, is a revealing question about whether they understand how the system really works. And so who do you think did that best? I think uh, Harris, Buttigieg, um, uh, Swal Swalwell all had pretty good answers uh, for, for that question. Uh, Senator Sanders rejected the premise of the question um, and said that we'll just do everything and we'll put the system on trial, basically, which is kind of his, his strategy. Um, but I think the others had a, a better first response um, to, to, that, to that question. But, it, but in the, all the candidates' defense, Todd did ask for a one-word answer, which right. that, that's kind of the lousy part of that question. It's nice to reveal priorities. It's bad to say one word and nothing else about how you would do it. From your perspective, um, which of the candidates, if you can say so at this point, would be best to mix it up with Donald Trump on a debate stage? I think Harris was showing how she would do it calmly prosecuting a case with facts and personal story. Uh, she did that quite well. I think Elizabeth Warren uh, revealed that she's pretty good at that sort of thing. Cory Booker, Julian Castro, all of those folks, I think, made it clear that they would be good at, at mixing it up with Trump. Others, Biden and Sanders, have their style, and 
they're not really trying to reveal through their style how they would go about mixing it up with Trump. They're just saying, look at me, I know what I'm doing, I'm a strong candidate, that would work with Trump. Whereas I think the other candidates are trying to show voters, you might not know me, but here's how I would look in a debate against uh, President Trump. You know, a lot of uh, Democratic candidates are saying, you know, this isn't about Donald Trump. We don't want to talk about Donald Trump. But isn't it really all about Donald Trump? Re-election campaigns are often about the incumbent and, and the job that they're doing. And so it's, it's, it was a little surprising that the night one debate the folks didn't mention Trump very much. I think the night two folks got the memo and mentioned him quite a bit more. Um, but a, a re-election campaigns for a sitting president are often uh, mainly about the job that person is doing. How well has the economy fared under that person's leadership? What are, what's our foreign policy situation? What's the mood of the country? All, all those kinds of things. All right. We leave it there. Michael Wagner, thanks very much. My pleasure.